Hi everybody and welcome to our service of worship this morning. I want to say a big hello to our church community and to all those who are connecting online for this service this morning. We're doing church a little bit differently again, but nevertheless, we really do hope and pray and trust that throughout this service, you will be blessed and you will be encouraged by all that we do um, in the name of Jesus. So let's just take a moment as we pray together and commit all that we do in this service to the Lord this morning. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the blessing of technology. We thank you for the means in which we get to still connect uh, with our people. And so we're praying now, Lord, that by the power of your spirit, that you would come and fall upon us wherever we are, strengthening us and enabling us and help us in the days to come to hold on to you. For we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And everybody said, Amen. I'm just going to hand over now to Glenn and Rhonda who are going to lead us in a song of worship. And can I really encourage you wherever you are to join in with us this morning. take a few moments as we join in prayer together so let's pray father god help us in these difficult days to trust you and to look to you for help and strength in this time of uncertainty and distress we ask that you would sustain and support those who feel anxious and fearful 
We pray that they would rejoice in knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, you have commanded us to live out our faith as servants of Christ. Help us at this time to care for those in need. Give us strength to comfort those who are fearful and to offer support to those who are sick and to help them know the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we ask that you would give sympathy and skill and resilience to all who are caring for those in hospitals. Give your wisdom to those searching for a cure. And through your spirit, we ask that those who have coronavirus would be restored again to full health. We also remember today all those who have lost a loved one because of this virus. We ask that you would bring comfort and grace and peace to those families and that you would sustain them in the days and the weeks to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we declare before you today that we are not a people of fear, but a people of hope. We are not a people of greed, but we are a people of generosity. Help all of us to walk these days ahead by the power of your life-giving spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we conclude our time of prayer this morning by praying those words that Jesus himself taught us, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Thomas, who is going to bring us our Bible reading for today. This morning's reading is taken from Mark uh, chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. James and John came to Jesus. They were the sons of Zebedee. Teacher, they said, we would like to ask you for a favor. Would, would, what do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand in your glorious kingdom. Let the other sit at your left hand. You don't know what you're, talk what you're asking for, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup of suffering I drink? Or can you go through the baptis baptism of suffering I must go through? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink a cu the cup I drink and you will go through the baptism I go through. But it is not for me to say who will sit at my right or left hand. These places belong to those they are prepared for. The other 10 disciples heard, it, heard about it. They became angry at James and John. Jesus called them together. He said, you know about those who are rulers of the Gentiles? They hold power over their people. Their high officials order them around. Don't be like that. Instead, anyone who wants to be important among you must be your servant. And anyone who wants to be first must be the slave of everyone. Even the Son of Man did. Uh, even the Son of Man did not come to be served. Instead, he came to serve others. He came to give his life as the price for setting many people free. Here ends the reading.
let's take a moment and pray. Father God, we pray now that as we open your word, that those who are gathered online would know and sense a real stirring of your spirit within them. We pray your peace over them and we pray that your word would bring encouragement through the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're walking through some difficult days ahead and there may be some dark days to come. And maybe you're still in a position where you feel overwhelmed or anxious or, or worried. And I just want to say to you this morning that those are totally normal emotions we feel when we're faced with a really difficult or trying situation. But this morning I don't want our focus to be fear and panic. I want our focus to be hope and truth. And we can do that as we gather around the word of God. So can I encourage you wherever you are, whether that's at home or wherever you're connecting online, can I encourage you to open up God's word with us and follow along in Mark 10 verses 35 to 45. And this morning, um, as we think about uh, God's word, I just also want to remind you that we're all in this together. And as we move forward in these difficult days, we can hold on to his strength and his word of truth to enable us to keep going. When I prepared this Lent series a while back, little did I know back then that the passages that I had chosen would be so applicable and so appropriate for what we're walking through right now. And last week we were in the Garden of Gethsemane and we we're thinking about an invitation that Jesus gives to us, which is to come and pray. And this morning we're going to be thinking about another invitation that Jesus gives us. And this time it's an invitation to serve. And we see that in the passage that Thomas read for us um, earlier on. This morning, as we consider this invitation to serve, we learn from the text in Mark that actually the disciples are wrestling with the very same thing that we do today, and that is greatness. We live in a world that tells us what greatness looks like and, and what we need to do to go about achieving it, whether that's through having power or authority or whatever. And I would say to that, that as Christians, we need to be really careful not to allow ourselves to fall into the trap of being influenced by culture who says that you have to live that way. And so as we think some more about this text this morning, Jesus is going to reveal to us what the real truth is about greatness and what that looks like for the disciples, but also what that looks like for us as we work that out in practice for our lives and walk with him today. Now, interestingly, like I said, the question of greatness is something that the disciples wrestle with. It's something that we wrestle with. And in fact, in this passage, we meet two men, James and John, who desired greatness. In Mark's gospel, if you've got it open there, we're picking up the text where we read about these two disciples, James and John, coming to Jesus with a really bold request. And the request is simply this. They say to, say to Jesus, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Like I said, a really bold and outrageous thing to come to Jesus with. And Jesus' response is incredibly interesting in verse 36. He simply says to them, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And they said to Jesus in response to that, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in glory. In other words, Jesus, when you establish your kingdom, we want to be your top two people. Now, this is really interesting because just before this had happened, this request, this desire for greatness came from these two disciples. Jesus had been telling his disciples three times about what he had to go and do. He told them that he was going to have to make a journey to the cross and die for us. He even explained that he would be mocked and he'd be scorned and, and, and that people like religious rulers would betray him. And you would think that the disciples having heard what Jesus had said, you would think that their mind would then be in support of Christ Jesus. They would, they would be thinking about him. They would want to support him. But actually what we see in this passage is something different. Their mind is on something completely and utterly different to Jesus. Their mindset is concerned about power and place and privilege. And Jesus ha had been revealing to them his mission about what he was going to do. And all they were concerned about was receiving power and authority. For James and John, they had this picture in their mind of how this was all going to work out. This was going to be great because their desire for greatness clouded their vision of reality. 
they were self-seeking. They were only interested in what they could have for themselves. They didn't get the bigger picture. They didn't get the, the, the mission that, that Jesus had in mind. And so they're basically just saying, Jesus, let us just sit at the right and the left hand side of you when you come into glory. And again, we come to something really interesting in this passage in verse 38, where, where Jesus really graciously responds to everything that they've been saying. And he says this, you do not know what you're asking for. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I was baptized with? So basically he is asking them, James and John, can you do what I have been asked to do? Can you do what I am about to do for all of humanity? And you would think that the, the obvious and the natural response would be to that, no. But actually what we see in this passage is an astonishing response from James and John. They say, yes, we can. They basically say, yes, we can do all that you have asked. If it means that we're going to get the positions that we so desire. But Jesus has to remind them that actually it's not up for to him to grant who sits at the left or the right. And what he does next in this passage, I really want us to pay attention to because we see the grace and the humility and the patience of Jesus. You see, it's interesting because in Jesus' response to them, which comes now, he, he did not disregard what they said. He didn't rebuke their desire for greatness. What he simply did with James and John was to help them understand and refine their understanding of greatness. He redirects their thinking and their perspective and their understanding to teach them what true greatness actually means and what it looks like and how they will experience the glory of God if they choose to follow him. In a world where self-promotion is encouraged, the way of the kingdom of God is to serve other people. Greatness understood is when we understand that we are called to be servants of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to them, James and John, if you want to be number one, if you want to be great, then what you must do is become a servant. Because if you are a servant in the kingdom of God, then you are the greatest of all. Verse 43 to 44 says, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Any And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. So Jesus makes the point here very simply that greatness in God's kingdom is never to be found in position or privilege or power or in the amount of things that we do or even in the opinions of other people. But actually it is to be found in humble service of others. As it says in Galatians, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Our world is still facing a huge crisis right now and now more than ever what we need to do is to come together for the common good. In a world where everybody is stockpiling, Jesus says in the kingdom of God, do it differently. Where everybody is looking to their own needs first and then to the needs of others in the kingdom of God, Jesus says, do it differently. In a world where, where greatness is summed up by place or power or authority or in the things that you do in the kingdom of God, Jesus says, do it differently. One of the greatest needs of our country right now is to, to come together to serve. The church, I believe, uh, because of this, is, is perfectly placed to model what Jesus has taught us in this passage, and that is to be the servant of Christ. Uh, A.W. Tozer once said that I am thy servant to do thy will and that will is sweeter to me than position or riches or fame and I choose, choose it above all things on earth or in heaven. So today I want to encourage us not to, to be distracted by, by power and authority or place or, or privilege or anything like that but actually that we in, humble, in a humble attitude would surrender ourselves in service to the Lord. At times like this, we as a church community have a really exciting opportunity because we have a, a, an opportunity to serve in new and creative ways. And as we accept the invitation of God's invitation um, to come and serve, 
we need to think about how we can continue as the body of Christ in this crisis to continue to serve other people. So my challenge to, to all of us is that in this crisis that, that we find new ways of serving. That because of who Christ is and what he has done, that we would look to him as our servant of all. And that maybe what we need to do in terms of, of service, maybe that we need to pray. Maybe we need to serve other people by picking up the phone and speaking to somebody who is lonely. Maybe service looks like cooking a meal for somebody else and leaving it on their doorstep. Let's take on the attitude of a servant because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. Mark 10 verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. In our crisis, the call for the church is to be a servant. Sing here's where I live.
to everyone who has connected or, or joined in this morning with our service of worship. We really do hope and pray that it has been a, a blessing um, to you. Do keep connected on our Facebook page and, and watch for things happening throughout the week that you can also connect in with. So we pray that this week you would know God's strength and his peace and we pray that you would know his hope in times of fear. Until we meet again in his name. Amen.